Welcome to the Awaken Man podcast. Hi, Pete. Hi, Ben. I just gave Ben some crap. It was before, beautiful. Um, it was the way, the way it was presented to me. Ben, put your <laughs> effing ring light on because I look well better than you. In so, in so many words. <laughs> <laughs> guys Pretty this much. is a gonna be yeah, a great yeah. podcast we've had a just a little shout our previous podcast to this like how to have hard conversations with partners is really doing well if you haven't checked that out already make sure you do that because it is really good it's yeah go back to that we one do i think it, it i, I genuinely it. do think it is people are coming back to me after listening to it and saying that they are so impressed with how we've navigated that conversation that it's how pragmatic the podcast is it's like people listen to a lot of podcasts and they went and took action i've like heard people having hard conversations people not even knowing that that was a body of research and self-development it's a really really good podcast and beautifully segue in, into another great one that we've got for you today and when we set out on doing this podcast we wanted to give you the best stuff literally wanted you to give you the best stuff that we use to help men and i've used to help women in the past to get credible results in their life pete's done the same too in business in personal development in relationship building and this is titled collapsing time how to achieve more in one day than a mediocre man achieves in five by collapsing time now i think it was roald dahl that said unless you look for magic you'll never find it now this sounds kind of kind of a very woo woo statement but what collapse in time means it's the ability to literally change the way that you see and go about your week to get shit done yeah i've been in self development a long time and what you hear in self development a lot is people talking about the future they talk about the future they talk about their goals and dreams and all the things that they want to achieve they they're great great talkers but their video doesn't match their audio and what happens is they push all of their activities, actions, thinking into the future. Now, what collapse in time is for me, Pete can share what he it is for him in a second, is the ability to literally create your life in the moment. And, you know, it's quite conceptual thinking is that there's no such thing as the future. All we have is the present moment. And if you listen to uh, Eckhart Tolle, if you listen to everything about the future, like there's no such thing as the future. There's only the present moment. So what we help men do is change from this stance where they approach the world like oh i will do this tomorrow i will get around to it i will one day i will uh, someday i'll you know they all of their the goals their wishes their dreams exist on someday i'll this process or this thinking this thinking technology helps them start to achieve more than in a 90 day impossible stretch than they've done in their previous year it helps them achieve more in one day than they previously did in a week that's my perception or interpretation t- interpretation of claps in time Pete, what's yours yeah i've actually i've got something here written down which i took from james clear the chap who wrote atomic habits which is a fantastic book by the way if you haven't read that do read it because it's a great little read i've got something here but something that me and ben were talking about just before the podcast started was like we talked to a lot of guys who get so they're like pissed off and frustrated that they get to the end of the day and just haven't got anything done like they get to the end of the day or and and hey i was i was definitely here and i still have days where i'm definitely here you get to the end of the day and you go to bed and you're like shit sake <laughs> like it's happened again like i just don't know what i've achieved today if anything right that angry little state so we use this collapsing time method we talk about it a lot in our program so it's just like constantly drilling it in so we can be conscious that okay what are the things that we can do today that's going to keep moving the needle in our lives and in our businesses but i've got this little snippet here that i took from his blog and i loved it he says what if we were to measure our entire lives as we measure light speed as distance traveled rather than time elapsed so how would each day look if rather than passing through 24 hours we measured how much we moved that day right so it's just the way that you look at time so rather than time being minute by minute hour by hour it's the distance that was traveled in that particular time like so what was achieved how far did you get in that particular day and i love that it's just a different way to think 
think about um, yeah, and how we I look think at time. While we're going through this conversation and you're listening in, some of the concepts and what we're going to talk about will really, really help you just re... I'm going to use the word stance a lot, yeah? Like the word stance, like how you stand up to the world, like what is your operating procedure to get stuff done? And like naturally, a lot of people throw stuff into the future. Like this is what one of the ha- habits they do is, uh, it's, you know, especially in sales, like, um, you know, if you've ever been on a sales call with someone and they've talked about you taking action and changing your life, you'll go, let me go and think about it. And what you're doing in that moment is you're pushing the decision into the future. And what you do by doing that, what you are doing is you think that it's a painful decision I have to make right make right now. Tell you what, let me just allocate a chunk of time between me and that decision and that will make it safer, easier, better. And we convince ourselves we have to think about stuff and actually yeah lag time the lag yeah. time it's a click and like something that i've been working on i've worked on is like if i want to be a decisive man if i want to be authoritative i've got to take action i've got to make decisions and i've seen that in not just myself but in others like hey Kate, let me think about this let me go and give myself a load of reasons why i can't or shouldn't do it uh let me create the safety and what collapse in time is like nope do you know what i'm going to say yes or no right now and we talk about this on our sales workshop we did in the in the wake of man project in Facebook, we did a sales conversation about, about having conversations with people who want to buy. It's like, it's really, really helpful when someone just gives you a clear yes or no. And one of the things that we've got to be able to do is work out what needs to be made a decision on in the moment. Now, what I'm going to give you today are three reference points, and they are all around what's called your internal geometry. You know, I wanted a really easy way to give this to you in a way that you could see. You know, it's like sometimes when someone's talking about something quite conceptual like this, you're like, oh, I can't really see that. But hopefully what you'll be able to do is be able to see where you've been living from one of these three stances. Now, these three th- stances, you'll often hear people say, I want to operate at a different level. But what we want to do is change, instead of operating at a different level, we want to operate from a different stance and in order for someone to collapse time they they have to transcend the most two common stances that people have which are circle and zigzag we're going to go through them we're going to give you really really good insights as we go through we're going to give you practical examples and we're going to give you where we've been in those stances as well because like it's not like something that you transcend forever like i don't become a straight line person forever i'm always going to have moments where i zigzag but once i can spot it i can jump out of it way quicker like even literally before the call we have a guest, a, a guest that we built a relationship, a guy called Robert Glover. And there was a, an opportunity to speak to him today instead of 20 days away. So me and Pete, we had a quick conversation. I was like, hey, can we change this? Because otherwise it's 20 days away. We get to speak to him. He's like, yeah, we'll do this, this and this. And we collapsed the time. We literally, instead of having to wait 20 days, we brought that speed into the moment and we made it happen. But these are tiny little nuances. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really nice nuance. I'm going to have to jump in and say something about that because I have absolutely noticed that that the really successful people that are in my life that I get to hang around with, there is serious momentum. Like when I send a text message to them asking something and it's about an opportunity or it's about an issue that we're going to solve that's, that's going to move the needle, it's going to push us up. The response isn't two days. It's like then. It's like an hour later. It's 10 minutes later. Like I'm not waiting two or three days for a response and then I respond and then they respond and then I respond and then, and then we've come up with an opportunity solution or and it's taken seven to ten days that doesn't happen like it's in a day it happens quick and so it's like i see it all the time where i talk to people and then it's three or four days later that i might get a response from them and then three or four days later again it goes back and forth and it's a month later and it's like what's that opportunity cost what what have you lost what's your opportunity cost yeah opportunity Opportunity lost just by threading that conversation out over seven to ten days rather than just getting it done in a day right the most successful people that i get to hang around with they do things quick there is momentum there is speed yeah there's absolute speed speed. and i think that's something to Mm. to just bring it the anchor into the conversation we're having today is like how to get more done in a a day than often people get in a week is they don't leave these little unconcluded tasks like i think this like barrage of tasks must weigh on people i look at some people and i'm like even in those conversation like oh they're leaving conversations to get back to people three four five days six days to little little returns on are you coming along or are you, are you doing this or a yes or a no or have you read that and that everything's spread out over such a long period of time and at least that's a common quote if you want something don't ask a busy person <laughs> you know but not not a busy fool someone who's getting shit done so these three th- these stances they are circle they are zigzag and they are straight line and these are three different ways which people front up to the world and what i'm 
going to give you are the, the symptoms of each. So when somebody lives in a circle world, this is somebody who experiences the same problems again and again. Now, you'll know that if you're a circle person or you're, you're around circle people, they'll constantly say, I'm solving this problem. Oh, my weight's still an issue or, oh, my sales are still an issue or X. Or Z. And they've always reporting the same problems because they feel that that problem is unsolvable. Yeah, that's one of the biggest things that, that, that circle people live in a circle world because they feel like it's my relationship's an issue. I'm never going to get him to do this or, I, or you know, she's never going to do this at X, Y, or Z. They see their problems as unique and unsolvable. I think that's a really important one because we also feel that we're special and we're the only person ever to have gone through that problem. <laughs> yeah. If you're listening to this and you're in a place where you can write things down, like not in a car, we're going to go through some points here about the circle state or circle people and do grade yourself yeah. out of 10. So like out of 10, like 10, 10 being this is absolutely me. Zero yeah, well, being, we can put not, this document in the show notes, actually, Pete. Right. So we will put mm. this document in yeah, the show notes. Job. Yeah. So grade yourself because then at the end you can go right. Because I think here for the circle, there's about 10, 10, I think it's 10 points points or 11 points so you can give you yeah, yeah give you a grade and go oh actually yeah, yeah. that is me or no that's not the, me. the circle person needs to know everything before taking action i need to find that i so what happens it's almost like i need to know every single part of the puzzle before i even decide to do the puzzle and ultimately it's mm. keeping them in ready mode they're always this misinformation so they don't start so circle people are always the constantly starting soon oh i'm gonna get around to that oh i'm gonna start that soon oh i'm gonna transform my body oh yeah i'm gonna do it's always like when they're describing their world it's always in the future because what they're trying to do is stack up all of the information before taking any action at all. Not quite ready. Yeah, not, I will be, so when I'm confident enough, I'll come, I'll speak on stage. <laughs> that's another one that's like, Pete, to be fair, Pete yeah. hadn't, uh, we did um, the best, the, was it the event that changed uh, my life? And I didn't even the, the, the ask my life, Pete, yeah. have you ever done public speaking before? I didn't even care to, I, I just presumed he'd done it. And at the, when we were driving back in the car on the way back, he was like, yeah, that's the biggest audience I think I've ever spoken to that's not my team. And I was like, holy shit, yeah. And it's, you know, credit where credit's due, he didn't whine, bitch or moan, he didn't say, I need to go on a speaking course and he did a monologue actually Pete shared his story and in front of a group of 40 50 people and he really you know really good really really good he did a really great job and he didn't enroll on a speaking school or go and read any books maybe you have Pete I don't know but but he just did it he just got in there he just took action and like that I'm sometimes not. is where he, he didn't wait around for say oh, I need to get so confident or I need to make sure I know exactly what I'm going to say I don't think you even had a script no I didn't and something that I did did do there which might help many other people if you're gonna talk in front of a crowd because it is bloody scary right i i can tell you now i had nerves in my stomach my stomach was going round in circles up and down all over the place once i got into the flow not a problem that changed but something i did do i was super super honest with the whole audience and i told them from the very beginning that i was feeling nervous right and that my hands were shaking and that my mouth was dry and i needed to take a drink because of it so i used a bit of radical honesty and that really really helped that really really helped but and here's where else you can use this like if you are wanting to start a business or you're wanting to start a course or a program or you want to release a product and you're not quite ready because you're still gathering information and so on you can absolutely start and be honest with people like there's this there's a really great thing about being vulnerable and open and honest about where you're at and it's like hey guys i'm gonna start a program or i'm gonna start a course or i've got a new product it's in beta it's not fully ready what i am going to do is release it now and work with a bunch of people to get it really good it, and that's just taking action before you don't take any yeah. action because you spend two years it. building a course that segues or, nicely actually beat into the next time. point of a circle person is you see failure as failure now let me be really clear circle people dread failure it's so painful for them they'll do whatever they can to avoid the pain of missing their ridiculous perfectionist standards so what it is is like when i launch my course and Unless I get 100 signups in the first day, it's a freaking failure. And I will do whatever I can, which means dance around commitment, not go all in, not even start, just to avoid this. And we spot this in men all the time. It's like, oh, I'll do my website, I'll do my business cards, I will talk around the problem. And what they're doing, they are shit scared of failing. They're shit scared of the no, they're shit scared of making making a failure. Because what they see is failure is negative. They see it's so painful. And they, so literally they'll do mm. a load of weird, stupid shit to avoid getting in there and 
and having you know making a mistake and we've got to see his failure as like as a route to success uh, like fail 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 faster fail quicker fail sooner fail more spectacularly and then you'll see so if you live in this you feel right now like, oh my gosh yeah i am scared of failing i am scared of enrolling on that weight loss program in case i don't hit the goal or if i'm, I'm starting a business and no one buys from me you're living in a circle world yeah or the other one the other like worried about failure is worried about what other people mm. might think or say about you yeah and it stops you from doing it because right? you're worried yeah, about I failing think the, in their um, eyes. Not the subtle art. Right. And Mark, Mark Manson said, You stop caring what people think when you realize they don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, there is that. Yeah, yeah, people, people, yeah. people think about themselves. I'm telling you I this just, now. I, I just know, remember like, actually a session me. where your scene goes. He was, <laughs> and then people would talk about haters and stuff like that. And he goes, "Hang on a second. Do you think are you that self-absorbed that you think that people have enough time to go around in their day thinking about you?" <laughs> it's just like everyone's just sat there, like, "Oh yeah, that really does make sense." And it's like, this is the other thing that I credit you, Zane. He said this as well. The if they are thinking and talking about you they're not who you want to be hanging around with they're not your clients they're not your friends they are well down the pecking order because the great people the most successful people they're not talking about anyone else they don't have that time no. and they're not, they don't they don't want they don't that energy it. right the, um, um good one and here's, here's another yazine quote actually that i did take credit for <laughs> which he wasn't happy about but it, he said it yesterday on, on yesterday's call i thought god that is that's a good one so i've got it here in front of me he said you'll never be free if if you worry about what others think or say about you i'll say that again you'll never be free if you worry about yeah. what others and think and this is all linked to failure you. and like what is it just let's kind of keeping it anchored in what we're talking about here is that most people slow down subconsciously in their week get less done because as you get more done in a day it accelerates you towards more possible judgment and one of the subconscious mechanisms to not have to face as much judgment is to slow down like if you think about this like if i'm not as potent if i'm not as effective and i'm not rushing towards success or moving quickly through my struggles then i that creates safety Safety. So you've got to think about this is like this is actually a subconscious mechanism you're using to self-sabotage and um, circle people are busy. Now, this is something I've noticed and I'm actually really, really proud of myself for over the last 10 years, how I've seen myself. I used to see myself as a busy person. You'll never, ever hear me say I am busy. I'm too busy. I always say now I've got time. I've got time because what it does, it means that if I want to do something, it's because I want to do it. I'm owning my life. Yet what you'll hear the narrative of a circle person is I'm too busy to train i'm too busy for the kids i'm too busy for work i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy they're too busy for everything so this is what's going on is like circle people are so busy they can't possibly move forwards because of all their busyness they're putting out fires that their, their actions are actually lighting so i'm so busy i don't finish one task and then that becomes a fire so i have to return to that task at the end of the week so i never really move forward in the week because i'm never really finishing anything because i'm so busy and i'm never really starting anything to so they're just stuck in this circle where they're just not getting anything done and because they're not getting anything done they're not as effective and because they're not as effective they constantly have to revisit things and it's like that business owner that's got no operating procedures in their business they've got no delegation because they're so busy how could they possibly delegate someone else because they can't got time to teach them and that is when you're being a circle person say again mm -hmm. too much on the plate yeah, yeah. too much yeah. on their plate busy busy people and like that's the thing is they're addicted to their busyness and what happens then is then they go and look for a sacred piece of information that circle people believe that there is a person a product out there that's going to solve all of those problems the knight in shining armor the magic pill the program and their quest is to find it i'm so busy there must be this magic crm mm -hmm. or time management system or way to do my calendar that's going to solve all of this <laughs> I've been there, been there. I'm just laughing because I've just I've spent time looking for these magical CRMs. So have I. But <laughs> yeah, here's something I tried doing many years ago. I'm still keeping up with it. I every so often catch myself. I say the word. I removed the word busy from my vocab. I removed it, and I did this when I was from my old company, and I instilled it in the team as well. So if we ever caught ourselves saying the word busy, we'd, we'd say a word. Yeah, I say totally agree. Because people say it's like, how's, how's, <laughs> how's life? I'm busy, busy. No, I've got loads of time. Honestly, I've, got no, I've never had so much time in my life. And yeah. they just stumped them. They're like, oh, I thought you were busy. Like, Absolutely. I, I literally do a lot of stuff in a day. And, and I, but at the same time, it's like, I'm not busy. And that is something that's a really, really key thing about being a circle person. Like that is one of the language patterns. And check yourself if you say it a lot. Yeah. yeah. So that that was point so, number um, four, by the way. Number 
number five is sacred information. So circle people believe there's a... Oh, no, that was point number five. Number six is they talk around issues. So a circle person will often not know the distinction between talking about solving a problem and actually solving a problem. They are people that talk around sales and don't go and make sales. They great talking around all the reasons why a problem is a problem, but they won't go and solve the problem. Now, Pete they got a really good session he does with the Awaken Man group, which is called IDS. So we do it once a month. It's amazing. And it's like, I think he's he's actually made it IDSA now, which is, uh, let me describe it, Pete, and you can tell me if I got it right. It's finding out what the issues are in your business, actually discussing why that issue is an issue. But then there's a final part is the solve, IDS. So issues, discuss why it's an issue, get to the root of the problem, not just the symptom, the actual issue. So like we're not like making enough sales is a symptom. What's the real issue? There's no sales app calls in the calendar. What's the issue behind that? And it's going down and down and down. And then the final part is the solve. So the men walk away with a clear objective to solve that problem. And that's on a monthly basis. So that mm -hmm. takes them out of the circle world and makes them yeah. more straight then, line. Yeah, absolutely. And then we put in the last bit, which is A, which is asset, right? And this is where we begin to collapse time and we start using leverage because it's like what asset can be created so that problem and issue doesn't come up again. Or if it does come up again, that we've got things in place that are going to make it a lot quicker to solve. So then we're not spending a week solving or it, no spending time a day all. solving it. Or no time at all. It's yeah, like this is like, this is yeah, this thinking is starting to unravel for you now if you're on the if you're listening to the podcast. Um, think about this, right? And this, like, I just want to address something here it's like that session is mega simple right super super simple however it's extremely powerful it doesn't matter what level you are in business whether you're doing five figures in a year or five figures in a month or seven figures in a month it doesn't matter like it's many a times it's the simple things that circle people don't do because we're busy well, doing the other things i tell you what though what's going to happen Fighting is fires. the reason they don't solve them is because it keeps them in the circle world they adopt to move forwards if i'm solving that problem every single week pete oh, i'm so busy I, I can't possibly think about solving this other problem i've got to solve this problem we've been solving for months going back to that first point they solve the same problems whereas if you create an asset which solves the problems without you mm -hmm. having to do them literally you don't even have that's not on your plate anymore so they say i know i know but don't do so this is something like another language pattern of a circle that's like oh i know i know i know i know <laughs> and i know i know i know is blocking words but they don't do part of the reason why they're stuck they're for forever gorging on knowledge yeah they know what to do but the rubber isn't hitting the road for this person yeah so what's happening is is that when they are reading about how to solve this problem what happens then is they feel a little bit better so it takes them out of the pain that the problem still exists but they don't go and actually go and do it so last two actually you know let's get through these because i think this is going to really give you you a real clear vision of the circle person or the circle stance is circle people are competent they are very competent so if you you're a very competent person listening to this you often know you're a competent person you know you're good at your job but you're always looking externally to take action you have degrees you have experience you've got results yet still dip inside the outside world for reassurance that you're taking the right step so this is a really really important part as well because sometimes you get confused you think oh my gosh i don't actually know why i don't know why i'm not taking action on this oh yeah I miss it's a sacred piece of information i haven't got nope you're competent enough you've solved problems before you're just probably procrastinating yeah let me take this next one because i actually spoke about this a couple of days ago with one of our guys uh, confuse activity with accomplishment right so this is the last point here this is a classic and i absolutely fell into this so super busy super active ticking loads of things off the list or just meeting to meeting to meeting and thing to thing to thing and get to the end of the day super proud of what i've achieved because i've done so much activity but actually was that activity just generally moving the needle in our business, growing our business or improving our relationships or whatever that looks like? Or was it just a bunch of activity that makes me feel good because I've done stuff and I've ticked yeah. things off? Um, it's that product productivity versus busyness. And um yeah, yeah. So this is a lot. Of, if I spoke to one of my guys about this the other day, and he was like, "Yeah, do you know what, Pete? You're actually spot on." He said, "I'm actually really good at it, but it's more about my clients not being really good at it, and I can teach yeah. this to my clients." So you know, and he's he's like a COO for like other people's businesses. It's a fantastic, it's a fantastic little business model. And but he's like, actually, a lot of my clients are very, very busy, and they get lots done, but actually is the thing that they're doing pushing their business forward is it the right thing to do so it's like challenging 
challenging yourself daily when you're looking at your calendar actually are these the right things to do or am i yeah just i think that's busy? something that is worth doing is it's having that to step out of being a circle person is you have an event and on a weekly basis where you just look at you what you've got in the week and say actually is this going to take me closer towards what i really want or is this just a load of you know stuff that's keeping me stuck in the same listen in we want to be really transparent and share with you one of our impossible goals this year we want this podcast to be the number one self-development podcast out there and guess what you could really help us if you're enjoying this conversation we're having and can think of one person just one person who may benefit or find this conversation beneficial hit the share button if you're listening on itunes or spotify or any of the podcast distributors and send it over to them right now we'd love to have more people just like you benefit from listening to these kind of conversations as this is what we're really passionate about sharing thank you so much for listening go hit that share button and you mid-roll that is that peak you know we're upgrading <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like that. Yeah, we're, we're improving. Yeah, we're improving. I, just, like, I think it's just really we're worth speaking about as we're going through this. Like, we, we I was like, yeah, we, we we made some shifts in the podcast and how we were doing it. And Pete said, oh, we should do this, and it was like this whole nother level of what we were like. Oh, I just I remember reading. It, I was like, God, Pete, I've just made these. I just made this jump and you're like, now you want this. And it was great. And it's, it's funny. It's just like, there's always another level. There's always another depth. Good. Okay. So listen, in. that was circle people. So these are some, if you've listened in, if you want this document that we've been like using to, to navigate the conversation, it will be in the show notes and please head on over there, click on there and you can, work through the document yourself it's really helpful and it'll give you the opportunity to score yourself out of 100 and sometimes you just need that clarity it's like oh my gosh yeah i'm just most of my life in my arenas of my life right now i'm behaving like a circle person that is why i'm stuck so yeah so when we did this we did this exercise with the mastermind guys a couple of weeks ago and i joined in there was a couple of those points above that i'm that i was like oh do you know what i've scored highly on that i need like two of those but it's got great i've literally written down in front of me on a little like a little notepad so i'm like yeah. okay just need to work on those so it might not be all of them might just be a couple go, okay I'm, I'm probably not a circle person yeah. but i've got uh, a few and that's what it's there for it's a diagnostic tool okay so this is like some of the questions you can ask like which of the above characteristics do i want to change and what results in your life would change if you were to do so and that's so really the essence of moving out of being a circle person taking ages to do things being stuck getting more done is what can i do right now like really good i actually when my first interactions when i met pete first couple of meetings we had together he'd say at the end of the meeting right what can we do what's a one percenter what's one thing we can do right now at the end of this meeting to move forwards to get this going i love that i was like yeah that's a really good like good leadership management technique is at the end of a meeting where people like the energy starts to drop and people are like like well, what's something we can get do to get a bit of momentum really really powerful so the circle person becomes the zigzag person when they start to take action so what happens is if you just picture a zigzag line horizontal zigzag line put someone takes a bit of action and then the bit of action creates change and then because of the change they shrink and contract for different reasons it might be i go make a sale i feel comfortable i don't make any sales i hit a pb in my bench press i pushed myself too hard i get injured it could be that I do something in my relationship that's vulnerable. I get rejected, so I don't do it again. And then what happens is my literally my success curve looks like a zigzag that never really goes up. It goes across. So zigzag people rely on inspiration over discipline. So they're addicts. They're always looking for that fix of what I call hopamine. So what happens is they're the kind of people that have to be in the right state to take action. When I feel like I go into the gym, that's when I'm going to go. When I feel like making a sale, that's when I'm going to take action when I feel like and then what they're always doing is they, they sit waiting for the right feeling to come up and that's why they're stuck and the reason that they're not circles they do take some action because the feeling does come up they do feel motivated they do feel inspired they do go and watch that motivational video on YouTube and then go and take some action but then they drop again afterwards so they're not quite living like a straight line where they're taking action after action they are slave to their emotions the next one is a conditional mindset so they are a victim of their circumstance so what this means Means is they're constantly waiting for the right circumstance to show up. I will only do my best work if the moons are aligned, my office is clear, the lights are in the right place, I've got a window. Heat. <laughs> it's a, obviously, there are con, you know, environmental constraints are important, but what but what happens is there's actually a really good story in this in the book, The Art of Learning by Josh Waitskin. Josh, Josh Waitskin's like this chess champion.
champion, Chai Chi push hands champion. And he talks about this to a really, really in the nth degree. And when he was a, a young boy playing chess, one of the strategies that his opponents would use to put him off were to kick him under the table. It happens a lot in chess, apparently, in, ch in children's chess. They'll do little things to annoy the, op the opponent to break their concentration. And so what he did is he told his mum, he's like, mum, what I want you to do is come in every, you know, randomly and shout at me in my room whilst I'm playing chess. And so he would play chess in an untidy room on the floor with rock music blasting and his mum would come in and interrupt him every five, ten minutes randomly to train his ability to work in an environment where the conditions for perfect focus weren't facilitated so he was training that ability to work under that sort of stress and most people live in a world where i can only work if things are perfect or i can only do this i can only start my my transformation mm. in january or my my diet on monday yeah it's increasing that lag time like we spoke about at the start you know between it's it, what we want to try and do is close the gap between where you're at now and then the goal that you want to achieve or the next thing you want to achieve but we subconsciously put those lag times in the middle yeah right that i'll start on monday well, we talked earlier about I'll the call this with, this is with Robert Clifford. I was like, the only oh, I had to take the call when I'm sat on my laptop in, in my nice office. I can't possibly take the call on the fly on the way down. Oh, I'm going to have to find a service station. It's not going to be perfect. I might not have signal. You know, that's that was the conditional mindset setting. I was like, no, we need to have that call today. Otherwise, we're going to have to wait 20 days. So that's the conditional mindset setting. And we, we shifted yeah. through that. Zigzag people rely on startup energy. So this is the people who are con what they call, is it al sham e Ambro or something. <laughs> it's this, uh, the hero in the beginning. And what it is, it's a Sanskrit word that describes the person that is great at the start, but when things get heavy and hard, they're running out the back door. We talk a lot about this sort of person in Awaken Man. Is yeah, absolutely. Because like whatever you're doing, whether whether it's in a business scenario or it's in a relationship, you know, that honeymoon period, the start, it's like the startup energy that is fun, but things get tough always, right? There's always going to be challenges. It's always going to get super, super tough. And if you retreat when it gets tough and start over, you know, kind of go a bit back to the circle as well, right? You just go around and around doing the same thing over and over again. I see that a lot, business to business to business to business, you, thing, to thing, to thing to thing to thing to thing. I think you said you know, on a really good point there. Recurring. relationships it's the guys who go on a date with a girl a lady goes on a date with a guy and things get hard and they run out the back door it's like literally and they've never really gone past that dating phase yeah. of relationships and they're still stuck you know it's, it's a big one in the dating world i think yeah it's like that and we talk about this a lot but it, our internal thermostat and you can relate the internal thermostat to anything right so you can put the internal thermostat to relationships like when you get to a certain <laughs> stage in relationships you duck out all right that's where that you're hitting that thermostat when it's getting tired if you're ducking out it's like we, we talk about it with money and when we get to that threshold to what we are subconsciously think we're what we're worth or, or we're used to earning something gets in the way right and we stop doing what we need to be doing or we duck out and then we go back down again so we go up and then we go down business we get to a certain level of business growth and then it's like oh not been here before you know my, not safe hit the thermostat down again yeah. That zigzag movement. The the next one's a big one. And I think it's one that you probably would never have heard about. Like fearing the next big problem. Like the reason you've never actually broken the cycle you're in is that whilst you're solving the same problems, you know what problems you're solving. So you fear the next big problem. I had this at fast. You know, I, I'm quite honest about this. I, I was so accustomed to solving problems and I was stuck for quite a few years, actually, in the role I was in. I wasn't stuck as in like, oh, poor me, I'm stuck. I just like, I'd just not moved forward, not grown. There's business hadn't grown as much as I probably wanted it to and I just feared the next big problem instead of solving the problems of you know literally with the customers I would be solving bigger business problems and so what was happening I was just shrink back into my role oh no I don't want to get an extra gym I don't want to grow and scale I don't want to have multiple sites because I just probably feared the problem more than I was caring to be honest with myself about and what would happen is you'd have a big win and then you'd self-sabotage I remember that was happening when we bought a new system into the gym for the six-week challenge we literally were bringing on clients like like no one's business and for some reason it stopped working and i think if i was look, look to look back and connect the dots i probably feared the next big problem I was like oh, almost if the gym's full i've never actually had that problem before i don't even know how to solve that problem if there's too many people and not enough spaces in the classes so i took my foot off the gas so this is really really important to acknowledge is that mm. when you are behaving like a zigzag person there's a new problem that you've probably not encountered and you're not conscious of what it is and so this is a really good little exercise is like what's the next big problem i'm going to have to solve 
solve. Rub your hands together and get excited about solving it instead of fearing it. You know, I think, you know, we talk about the Awaken Man and the way we've been growing is at some point, the amount of people that we have on the current course structure will have to shift. And so we'll have to solve that next problem as we get to it. But going back to the talk we talk about, we, we don't need to know all that information yet. It's not relevant yet but we will have to solve that at some point. The zigzag people move between circle and straight line. So yep, their experience and high performance create surges, but they've found something magical to give them a how-to or inspiration, but it only lasts for a short while. That's the thing is that, and this is something that I see in the mentoring space a lot, is that when people are dishing out call scripts, magic potions of, this is exact steps to build this to here, is that it, this works really, really well, but it won't help you become a long-term leader and be able to diagnose your own faults in the business. You'll constantly, being a, having a slave to having bringing consultants in and not because you're constantly relying on other people's structures so what we teach guys is how to run their business the way that they want them to be run and that massively shifts from like instead of copy my way of doing things it's like no you know the way to do it let's help you get out your own way and that stops them from being a like a mm -hmm. you know shift in between that circle and straight line position yeah this next one here it's like not being conscious of where mm. they are stuck right so zigzag people will wait way too long before seeking help and this is definitely a guy thing as well it's like we struggle to ask for help when we need help or we're just not conscious of where we need help and so just ignore that and keep doing what we're doing and time goes by lots of time goes by before we ask for help before we go oh bloody hell okay i could probably do some help here and two years has gone by and what's the opportunity loss cost yeah like we spoke about well, earlier, this was like a, not asking for help. a situation where you know coming back again let's go over the the whole point of this conversation how to get more done in a day than most people get done in a week so I, I would take three hours to edit a video and i was thinking that only me could do this i, I wasn't conscious yeah. of where i was stuck and i was just like i wasn't conscious that, that there would be other people out there that could do probably just as good and if not better job than me and i found christian who, who edits our videos really good at it and I was like, oh yeah, he t said how much he charged for doing the video. And I was like, oh my God, that's so much more cost effective than me spending three, four hours. And he's going to do it in an hour or 30 minutes. I wasn't conscious where I was like, and I told Pete about it. And he just said, L you literally have been doing that for three or four hours. That's now not even a task for you. You just give him the video. I just literally opened the video link and he does the video. And so this is why I can now get way more done in a week than I, because I haven't got three hours of editing to do. <laughs> It's just like, so I wasn't conscious of where I was stuck, but actually having that support from a business partner, from outside vendors and, and uh, suppliers, that is where delegation comes in massively. So uh, that's the zigzag, right? So like, that was a score out of 60. Think about where you're zigzagging, like where you're zigzagging in the past, where have you had some success and then shrunk? And then what specifically are the characteristics of your zigzag behavior? Are they in your relationships? Are they in your money world? Are they in your, have you had huge success in your business and then you've just sabotaged in some way by telling yourself some shitty stories? And think about how you can start to become more of a straight line person who we're going to talk about in the final part of this podcast. So ultimately, if you want to get more done in a day than in most people do in a week, you have to live like a straight line person. And it's the straight line st stance because it's where you're very, very capable of creating in the moment. It's literally old in time. What would normally take someone a seven day period, you could do in seven minutes, seven hours. You're very, very good at literally like, what is the, what are the 20% of the the actions that are going to get 80% of the results, that Pareto principle. You're very, very good at actually operationalizing that. And the straight line person knows the future is created in the present. Now, what this means is the best way to predict your future is to create it. It's like, what can I do right now that's going to have the biggest possible effect? And normally these are big, scary tasks. Like I need to email this person, but it's actually removing the fear from these tasks and just doing them. Knowing that the tasks are actually neutral and it's you that's applying the charge to it. I was thinking the other day, I was on a call when you scene was doing the session and he was talking about big joint dreams and god-sized goals and there was somebody who i knew that if I, we're, we're running an event early part of next year and we're just putting it all together at the moment i was like all i need to do is send an email to this person and i've been putting a story to my, my email and that's what's getting in the way of me sending the email i know what to send in the freaking email so i created the, the future in the pro in the moment i literally sent the email and we're, we're on that call today with robert actually because i did that in the moment this making hopefully this is making sense this was me behaving like a straight line person i didn't wait for three days to mull over what 
was going to say to him. The email was imperfect. It probably had some spelling errors. I got a reply within 20 minutes, if that. Yes, let's have let's jump on a call and have a conversation about it. I've got some speakers who I can recommend. So I created the future in the moment. Do you want to give an example for you, there, Pete? I think you've got a few there. Nice. Yeah, I, like it's very habitual of mine now is that if something's going to take me less than five minutes to do, I'm doing it now. I'm just like getting that done, get that done. Won't even think about it. Get re- super, super imperfect. Super, super imperfect. Just get it done. Like Ben's just there. Just get the email out. Delegate something over there. Message someone quickly to go and, to go and do that. Um, just take in I think this is worth really, mentioning, really quick action. Is that something I've observed about the two of us and with your scene and the guys who have joined and got great results with our program is that they've been urgent, but they've not realized the potential of how urgent they can be with their goals. And being around Pete, like this is something that, you know, you are mm. seeking mentorship or you're just trying to actually flourish is that pete's urgent and like so say you're looking to for someone to help you be more urgent with your goals spending time in pete's company is going to help that because you pete triggers guys about how urgent he is like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do trigger them. I, trigger, I actually trigger someone last night. One of the guys messaged one of my pro, our private clients messaged me last night. Pete, you're relentless. I've got to switch off and fried. And, I, and but it's but it's right. Like I just don't let the guys get away with anything because yeah. I can see all of their potential, and it's right in front of their faces, and they're not taking it. And you have to be relentless. This isn't a I'm going to do this tomorrow. This is a I'm going to fucking do this right now. Right. So I do trigger the guys because I'm like, come on. I'll send them question marks. It'll piss them right off. But it it moves the needle sometimes for them, right? Because we have to be urgent. Yeah. I think this is something that you might be getting, you might feel an internal friction coming up as you listen to this, is that it's the ability to operate with extreme urgency and get shit done and then be able to have the deep love time so when we we talk we teach this on our program which is deep work and deep love we'll probably do a podcast on it as well and it's something i didn't understand is that that what messes up a lot of businessmen and business women as well is that they expect themselves to be able to do this intensity that people talk about 24 7 and it's not the case it's the time that you've allocated you're getting so much done in that time you're so effective that you can turn your your phone off at 4 p.m and be with the children or 2 p.m and be present with your kids or whenever you choose to end your day and it's yeah absolutely it's like if you want to have that lifestyle business where you are working six hours a day that absolutely can be achieved and you are and you're earning good money and you, you are having fun with your family and you're going for food in the evening and having playtime with your kid in during a day like that absolutely is achieved but in that six hours that you choose to work yeah we're yeah. intense <laughs> like like and the work that's being done isn't that of you know the zigzag person the zigzag stance that we spoke about earlier where we're just ticking things off for the sake of accomplishment it's like these things are getting us they're yeah. moving us towards our impossible oh, exactly. goals yeah. absolutely like ben alluded to earlier about the the 80 20 right it's a, a lovely little thing that's super super easy to do once a month or every week i do this every week on the weekend sit in my garden it's really nice and quiet i can hear the birds and I'll have a think about what's happened that week and like 80 20 it like what went really well that i can keep doing more of what's the thing that's, that's taking me 20 percent of my time that's getting me 80 percent of that result or 70 percent or 60 percent whatever that looks like how can i do more of it and then i'll think about yeah where the leverage is for the following week right i need to get like there's something for us right now and that we're gonna start focusing on and it's building our audience right so it's real real top of funnel just just getting oh, you heard earlier. our name Actually, out there they a little bit it. more. They heard that, that, really little, that little hard. mid-roll where we said share the yeah. podcast. That's why we want you to share the podcast so we can reach yeah. more people. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, where that mid-roll bit came from is when I was thinking about these things. And I'm like, ha, here's an idea. There's and a can, high leverage. Get, can we make sure? Right. <laughs> yeah. Let's so make, this was like, that, get that, that done <laughs> and actually get it done before the next podcast. And that's what happened. And that's exactly what it is. Isn't it? Like, that's why, you know, that's something that <laughs> it's not... This is like this in action, guys. And this is why I'm interrupting Toy Beats is that you can see that he has the thought. He, I literally get a text message. We need mid-rolls. We need this, this, and this mid-roll. And I'm like, yeah, I can get that done before next podcast. Next podcast, they're here and they're ready on the de- on their on the deck. And that's it. It's like, and if you share this podcast, that's working. That's a scene. Okay, yeah, brilliant. So we can see that it's closing that gap between literally conception, Pete having a thought about getting this podcast out to more people, and action. We start to see the stats go up. Like, hang on a second, we did that podcast 
podcast, 10 people, 15, 20, 30, 50 people shared it. And we're now getting virality and more people are hearing what we're sharing. Yeah. And that there's that little mid roll as an asset right because it's made Actually, once right yeah and then it's then once it's done it's done you know ben spent you know, maybe 10 minutes making that and then that's that's it it's done then and we can use that over and over and over again and didn't keep, take uh, 10 minutes you know i had to i fluffed it i fluffed it so many times yeah but anyway um <laughs> actually i'll play it again listen listen because i actually sound quite good listen to it again listen in we want to be really transparent and share with you one of our impossible goals this year we want this podcast to be the number one self-development podcast out there. And guess what? You could really help us. If you're enjoying this conversation we're having and can think of one person, just one person who may benefit or find this conversation beneficial, hit the share button. If you're listening on iTunes or Spotify or any of the podcast distributors and send it over to them right now. We'd love to have more people just like you benefit from listening to these kinds of conversations as this is what we're really passionate about sharing. Thank you so much for listening. Go hit that share button. Shameless plug there, Pete. At the same time, it's exactly that, right? I think I fumbled even in that one. Okay, let's go into the next one. So a straight line person can use distinctions. Okay, and this is really, so we actually do have a whole training on this about what a distinction is and a distinction is i'm behaving in this way and it's not serving me and i want us to behave in this way so the most simple distinction you might have heard us talk about quite a lot is the owner versus the victim so when we create our life like a victim we are saying life is happening to me this is hard nobody understands poor me i'm the victim i'm looking for a rescuer there's a persecutor i'm very disempowered i can't really do much when i'm in victim stance Okay, victim view. However, if I take 100% responsibility and create my life like an owner, I can, I'm very empowered. I can have way more action and way more power in my own life. And this is some, one of the biggest distinctions we help men see is like, oh, poor you. What a victim stance is like, I don't, we don't say it like that, but and we'll just point it out. By the way, the way that you just shared that problem or struggle is that you're the victim here. Oh yeah. And they see that and then they shift their stance and they're like, okay, well, if I was an owner, if I was taking a hundred percent responsibility what would i go and do i'd go and get this out by the end of the day see you later and that what quickly separates someone who's in a circle world versus zigzag world to a straight line person is their ability to self-coach and do that and let me share this with you it's not that you don't ever drop into like the victim stance you're never going to be exonerated from that but what you're able to do is instead of basking in your own self-pity for an hour two hours half a day being lost you literally like a minute a microsecond and you know you have a really shitty day pete i had a really really shitty day on friday was it you know hell of a day and i, I just sent to it i sent said yeah, a friday. sent him a like a fist bump in the morning i said like just want to nod how tough it must have been for you yesterday he was straight back on form the following day he wasn't licking his wounds to like tiny violin song he was straight back in because he was able to use a distinction and say right okay this is not what i want this is what i want this is what i'm going to go and do about it he, he operated from a straight line stance a a zigzag person would have gone oh i need to shrink i need to just make sure i solve all these problems poor me and then i'd have had to wait three four days to get my you know business partner back functioning properly Properly before he was doing great work again nope very next morning good to go i think we had a call on the way on the saturday morning actually didn't we things were happening yeah yeah all right the next one here um <laughs> i was just fucking straight on it uh the next one this one here um ac actions and this is this it leads in lovely to this next one actions a straight line person doesn't get overwhelmed they know action can be broken down into 0.5 percent steps right so it's like i know what it's like when we've got these big audacious impossible goals and it can be very overwhelming and there are 27 things to do and 16 different hats to wear right if we've got if we're in a smaller team it can be super overwhelming however just breaking that down into the into the next 0.5 percent step like the real simple thing that you can take next like i had i think i spoke about this a few weeks ago on the podcast and it's, i sat on the sofa in the morning and i think leo was going mental and i was just getting into that victim mentality and i quickly reminded myself pete put your feet on the floor just get up and i knew that you know that tiny little i didn't know what i was going to do after i got up right but just get on your floor get up stop thinking this way did that then i was moving moving then i was brushing my teeth then i had my clothes on then i'm doing the rest of the day those little one percenters my neck my other big one is in the morning this is i might have said this last week but like i've started doing this every morning when my alarm goes off the first thing i do is i just quickly quickly oh, put my feet on the floor right yeah it's been a, I, do you know what i got it from there's a program on yeah, netflix something about anna 
Um, she's yeah, yeah, that's it. Inventing Anna, right? And one of the investment bankers there, the main investment banker, like who's who's investing into her. I noticed he lives in this lovely house, right? His alarm goes off at six o'clock every day. He hits the alarm and the blinds go up automatically, right? But I noticed that he immediately puts his feet on the floor, right? And feet on the floor, walks straight into the shower and does does his thing, gets on with his day. And I and I thought that's I like that because sometimes. And I'm pretty good at jumping out of bed quick, but I will lie there for a minute because it's nice and warm, right? But if I'm like, no, feet on the floor, and that, that little movement, that little 0.5% step, I'm now out of bed. I'm now going on to the next thing. And it's those, that, and that there, it keeps momentum going. Simple. That's the next one. Simple. There is no multi-step plan. Mm -hmm. There is no route map. There is finding the most straight line system between A and B. And that's it. Like, how can I make, is literally, yeah. how can I fold time? What's the most powerful action I can do? I, I remember having a conversation with a potential mentor. I didn't sign up with him. I didn't have the money. And I said, oh yeah. He was like, what's your goals? And I was like... <laughs> It's like, I want to make a hundred grand. And he's like, okay, who can you sell one thing for a hundred grand for? And I was like, at the time, I just was not there. And I was like, what? I was like, he was like, oh, the fastest way to get there is to sell something for a hundred grand. What have you got? What do you sell? There's a hundred grand. I was like, I don't, I don't. And he's like, well, that's what you need to go and work on. <laughs> It's just like, and that at the time, I just thought that's terrible mentoring. It just wasn't at that level, you know? And that's the thing is that we, sometimes we will go, I'll reduce my price. I'll make it really, really cheap. So then I can just, and, it, and again, that's like making multiple steps. The most straight line thing is like, what's the one thing I can sell for a hundred grand? We talked about for the $10,000 cheeseburger the other day in the group. It's like having those things that people will buy because they're often the straight line. The fastest way to get wealth mm -hmm. is to sell stuff that obviously has got margin in it. Not the fastest way, but it's one of the ways. So the next one's personal permanence. So this is something that's really important for a straight line person. They, they let go of the person that they used to be. A straight line thinker doesn't buy into circle world like permanence. They act just because you had a shitty week last week where you didn't get stuff done. It doesn't make you an unproductive person. If you, oh, I'm so unproductive. I'm such an unproductive person. I never get the things done. So what you've got to do is you've got to buy out of that. And that's working on your self image. Yeah. And it's, it's being able to say, just because I've failed it doesn't make me a failure and that's really important you can let go of how you've behaved in the past a personal like someone who believes in personal permanence means that you are forever the same person it's not it's not that at all and then the final one is that the straight line person who gets more done in a day than in a most people get done in a week is that so they create projects so at every knockback minor failure a straight line thinker says what do i need to create to solve this in the future going back to the assets what people were talking about before is like a mini project. Okay, we got bad, a bad bit of feedback or someone you know left the program or someone asked for a refund or someone someone didn't buy. What can we create in order to never have that again? Make a little mini project and make it happen. So that's the, the straight line stand. Again, if you want the document, it'll be in the show notes. Uh, go and take a look at them. Got loads of other stuff on there as well. And you'll be able to give yourself a straight line score. Now, the reason we've shared these with you today because we feel that they're really, really good ways, pragmatic ways of analyzing where you are as a person and how you can make the shift from a, z a circle to a zigzag to a straight line you don't actually need to graduate from a circle to a zigzag person you can if you identified yourself as very circle you don't need to go okay well next i'm going to be a zigzag and then i'm going to be a straight line what you just need to do is just literally say right this is how i'm going to behave so if you wanted to re-listen to the end of this podcast that would you know that they're the ways that people in a straight line behave other than that hopefully you really enjoyed today's sharings i and i personally get so much value from revisiting all this stuff that we teach and it shows me where i need to work on in, in my personal stance and trajectory pete did you want to share anything before we go uh, no i just i just noticed actually on the on the document that we've been going through on this podcast that actually at the end of the document there's another page of loads of activities probably about 25 minutes of like activities where you could apply this level of thinking to your, like your health your wealth your relationships all our key areas personal development and so on so yeah definitely just like ben said it'll be in the show notes grab that and get grab a coffee grade yourself and um and then see where you can you can improve and move the needle thank you so much for listening to the wake up podcast and we'll see you next week